Thought for the day, brothers and sisters, today I was reading in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, where in one little verse I wanted to speak about that has so much importance, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2, where the Apostle Paul spoke about how he wanted to speak about nothing else but the cross of Jesus Christ. Something he echoed also in Galatians chapter 6, verse 14, where he said, I boast nothing about anything except knowing Christ and him crucified. Yesterday I did a devotional on divorce and remarriage, love, and uh, some people unfriended me, sadly. When you don't agree with somebody on certain issues that are not really essential as Christians, we shouldn't divide. We can debate over things, but we can't divide. However, however, one thing that is truly essential that we should truly stand for unequivocally, 100%, is the cross of Jesus Christ. The old age old question is, who crucified Jesus Christ? People think it was the Romans, the Jews, and that's true. Acts chapter 2 verse 23 says that it was actually God who crucified his son. It was his foreordained plan to use wicked people to crucify his own son. Acts 2.23. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24 tells us that it was our sins, my sins, your sins, that put Jesus Christ on the cross. He bore our sins, it says there, so we could be righteous in the eyes of God. So we need to remember that when we look at the cross, yes, wicked people 2,000 years ago were used by God, but it was ultimately God's plan for Christ to go to the cross for our sins. Jesus Christ died historically 2,000 years ago on a cross at Calvary, but we're told in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, that Jesus Christ was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. In Genesis chapter 3, shortly after Adam and Eve sinned against God, in verse 15, we are told that Satan would bruise the heel of Christ and Christ would crush his head. That is speaking about the, the victory that Christ would have on the cross that was already spoken about in the beginning of creation. Do I know all this? Do I understand all this? No. I can only say what the Bible tells me, like in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, where we are told we are chosen or predestined in God through Christ from before the foundation of the world. Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 and 9 says that God's ways are much higher than our ways. His thoughts are much higher than our thoughts as the heavens are above the earth. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29 tells us that the secret things belong to the Lord. There are things we truly won't fully understand, but we have to take all these things by faith. When I look at the cross, brothers and sisters, I see compassion. In Luke chapter 23, verse 28, when Jesus Christ was hanging on the cross and there were women crying and weeping, he said to these women, weep not for me, weep for yourselves. In the midst of all his suffering, Christ didn't think about his himself. He was still thinking about the other people. In John chapter 19, verse 26 and 27, when Jesus saw his own mother weeping at the cross, he looked at his disciple John and told basically what he said was, take my mother in, take care of her. And that's what he did, as we learn in the scriptures there. So when Christ was on the cross, he was not even thinking of himself. He was still thinking of others. My brothers and sisters, that's how we ought to live. We do not die for our sins. However, we die to our sins. As the Apostle Paul would say in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31, we learn to die daily. Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, told us in Luke chapter 9, verses 23 and 24, that if anyone would come after me, they must de deny themselves, pick up their cross and follow him. The cross is the symbol of death. And as I said, we do not die for our sins. That was paid for by Christ, but we must die to our sins. We must die every day to ourselves. We must die to our affections, our values, and start to live more and more for the Lord. I hope today, my brothers and sisters, that we could be like the centurion, who in Mark chapter 15, verse 39, when he looked at Christ dying on the cross, he said, truly this was the Son of God. I grew up, my personal little story, as a Roman Catholic, and we would go to a church and we would see crosses with a corpse on it. We don't look at that like we used to before. Much of that, sadly, is idolatry. 
When you look at a cross, we must be like the centurion and say, truly, this was the Son of God. My friends, today we must come to Christ, crucified, dying to our flesh, coming to him as Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30 tells us. Jesus said, come to me, all you to the weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I am meek and lowly of heart. He was humble and contrite. Christ was a humble man. We too are to be humble. You often hear me quote Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 5, where it says that if we are to have the mind of Christ, we are to think of others more than ourselves. As I quoted before, when Christ was on the cross, even suffering, he thought about the women as they were crying in their pain. He saw his mother and was concerned about her welfare. He wasn't worried about how much he was suffering, thinking of others. I often remember the acronym JOY, J-O-Y. J stands for Jesus. Other stands for others. Y stands for yourself. To have true joy, friend, my friends, is to really put Jesus Christ first and foremost in your life. We are living in a day here in America where today, actually, uh, the first day back to school for the kids in my school district, it's been, wow, about over six months since they've been in school because of this coronavirus pandemic. There's much anxiety, much fear, much anger about what's going on. I work as a custodian in my flesh. I'll be honest, I could be very worried about having to clean up after everything today. I've had this coronavirus already. I had it in April. So my flesh could be worried, troubled. However, when you come to the Lord, my friends, he gives you a peace, a peace that this world can't give us. That's what Christ said in John 14, verse 27, that he would give us a peace that this world can't give us. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3 tells us that God will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are stayed steadfast upon him. Psalm 46, verse 10, the psalmist reminds us that we are to be still and know that he is God. As I go back to work, I would ask you to keep me in prayer, keep the children in prayer, the staff that we all have to work with in the public schools in prayer. But we have to go on in life, having that peace, having that boldness that comes from the Lord alone. Our flesh is weak. It's weak, but the spirit is always willing. We need to yield to the Holy Spirit. Read Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. Read about the fruits of the Holy Spirit. If you truly want these fruits, this evidence in your life, yield to him, submit to him, surrender all to him. God bless you all this day. Stay strong in the Lord.